No problem. Relax, take it easy. Ah! <laughs> Ow! All right, so we have a PS2 demo disc here. This was a an official U.S. PlayStation Magazine hey there, disc. Welcome to Casa de Maggie. I thought I'd kill some time doing what I do best. I sort of forgot you were coming over. I would have cleaned up. Oh my oh God! Well, what the hell is this? Probably wondering what we've got jammed to this issue. First, I went up to Electronic Arts in Vancouver to see how SSX Tricky was coming along. After watching this segment, be sure and check out the demo in the vault. Then we asked the producer of Hot Shots Golf to show us what it takes to make a U.S. version of a Japanese game. If you ever wanted to be a musician but you're lacking in a talent, then the PlayStation 2 could be your instrument of choice. So killer, dude. Check out our segment on frequency and maybe you can develop those musical chops you never knew you had. And for those diehard RPG fans, the development team at Square gives a sneak peek at Final Fantasy X. Okay, I completely forgot about this. Well, I've got a few more demos to try in the vault, so I hope you don't mind letting yourselves out. Maggie. Uh, happy gaming, and I'll see you next issue. I did not remember this character at all. Till just now. <laughs> okay, so eventually the official U.S. PlayStation Magazine's... Uh, demo this sort of merged with the PlayStation Underground and this is what we're looking at here PlayStation Underground was sort of like a disc based magazine demos uh, video interviews and all that kind of stuff more fleshed out version of the kind of stuff we saw on the PlayStation magazine releases now, this is issue 53 now I skipped over quite a number of issues towards the end of the PlayStation 1 era on this magazine a lot of the demo discs really just sort of rehashes of old demos, not really offering much in the way of newer stuff. So I skipped over a lot of those because I don't feel like going through all of those. PlayStation 2 discs, I ended up with a lot more of those than I did with the PlayStation 1 discs, and I know I saved them, but it's a little bit scattershot at the moment which ones I have on my person. I know I have them, I just haven't found them yet. I've located about 14 of them. So this is number the first one, the uh, lowest number. I'd like to go in order, but you know if I can't, then I'm not gonna. <laughs> so up, uh, up uh, an ad for shoes or some shit. It didn't shoot. The vault. So I guess the vault were the games, and this is just a video. Grandia, not a series that I got into. In fact, there were a lot of big series that you'd think that I would be into that I just never, never even tried. So I don't really know what the, what I'm looking at here. <laughs> that was a, it was a JRPG, right? Now the PlayStation 2, once the demo disc started rolling in for the PlayStation 2, there was a, sort of like a resurgence of um, with demo discs in my eyes, anyway. Because back when I first started getting these discs on the PlayStation 1, it was like, I mean, I don't have many games on PS1, so the demos are a big deal, and I played every demo to death on the PlayStation 1. Then as time went on, I had more games, and stuff got older and became more affordable at Funko Land or whatever. I was less reliant on the demo discs to provide my gaming fix. Now that all sort of re refreshed a little bit in the PlayStation 2 era because, you know, the clock kind of got reset. PlayStation 2 games were a little more expensive than PlayStation 1 games. I think they averaged about $50 compared to like $40 for the PS1. I didn't get a PlayStation... I It was maybe like six, seven, or eight months or so into the PlayStation 2's life cycle that I was able to pick one up. So, I didn't, um, it wasn't that long before I got it, but, like, pretty much all games were new releases at the time. So, I wasn't able to really pick up a lot of games, you know, money was expensive, and demo discs, once again, were my way of playing games. Okay, looks like this demo is not going to play. Alright, um, uh... 
Might have to jump out and jump back in. Okay, Jake Kuhn 2 didn't play. It's probably just a video anyway, but... Alright, so here we got... We have an actual demo here. And it looks like it's going to load. Awesome. Zender works, huh? Amusement software developer. Way to be oddly specific there, but not specific at all. PlayStation 2, that was a hell of a time to be a gamer, because, I mean, you had seen the... Oh my god, it was... I swear I must have played this demo a bunch of times. Because like I said, I was playing all the PS2 demos a lot. But I don't remember this. Oh, I get to choose. They joined my party. Okay. Ah, uh, this is weird. <laughs> and you know, the game doesn't look like it's rendering quite right in this uh, emulator. Oh my god, look at the pop-up. I mean, I, what I was trying to say before this game interrupted me and kind of proved me wrong was that this was a hell of a time to be a gamer, the PlayStation 2. Say the Dreamcast also, really, but the PlayStation 2 is what more people got into. So you had the, really the PlayStation, the Saturn, and the N64, really the sort of the first generation of game consoles that were really actually capable of 3D. Now you had 3D games on the SNES and, and uh, Genesis and PCs and all that kind of crap. But it was really, like, definitely an afterthought as, as far as the, um, is it fight over? <laughs> they were barely capable of it, and the Jaguar and all that were barely capable of it, if at all, really. And more or less, the PlayStation comes out, and the Saturn, and the N64, and they were just at the point where they were barely capable of practicing doing practical 3D graphics. Then, of course, as time went on, the developers got better with it, and they squeezed more power out of it, so you got better-looking, better-running games and stuff. But they developers really had to put a lot of effort into churning out what they were able to on those consoles. Then the second generation of 3D consoles start coming out. The Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, the um, GameCube and Xbox, all of those belonged in that generation also. And it was more like, less like, okay, so we're starting off from that base, what they were able to achieve on the PlayStation. And then from there, they were able to just... The machines were so much more powerful that it more or less pulled the reins off of them. Like, okay... You wanted to do all this, but you were limited by what that's, this machine could do. PlayStation 2, limits are gone. And then, so it was like, okay, all the games that you loved, we can do them better now. And then from there, and, and that was what the beginning of the generation looked like. But then as it went on, you started to see stuff like Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. Um, what the Final Fantasy games could do, what um, the Metal Gear games could 
do. And it really changed the game. Also, um, if you're looking at like the uh, the Xbox, say like Halo, and it was really like a amazing change. Like it started off good because it was like okay, all that you had, but better. And then it really jacked it up with like okay, all these new experiences, stuff that you didn't even think of as possible, could, never even could have dreamed of in the PlayStation One. Like, Grand Theft Auto and the PlayStation 1 is garbage. Like, I don't... Like, I knew maybe, like, three people who actually liked those games. I certainly wasn't one of them. But then Grand Theft Auto 3, enormous change. Of course, I mean, that was a uh, little ways after this. These games... This is some weird JRPG I'm playing right here. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing. And I'm honestly not going to stick around much longer in this demo. It's, it's a weird little... <laughs> weird little game here. I mean, the art style... Sort of reminds me a little bit of a... Uh, N64 RPG. There weren't many of them, but there were a few. There's an N64 RPG called Quest 64. Not only did it look like crap, it was crap. The game was terrible. But the art style of this, and the environment and all that, sort of reminds me of it. Alright, I'm getting out of here. Oh, no I can't! Alright, loading back to menu. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors 3, oh! Oh, yes! Wait, what year was this demo disc from? I remember there was a Dynasty Warriors 2 demo disc. And I played the hell out of that. I really did. Dynasty Warriors 3. I don't really remember Dynasty Warriors 3 demo. I mean, I must have played it. Dynasty Warriors was originally a fighting game. Like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game like um, Soul Calibur, or Soul Blade, Soul Edge, whatever the hell you want to call it. Then the sequel came out, and it was so different. And instead of being a 1v1 fighting game, it turned into this sort of like um, 1v a billion. Um, not a real-time strategy, really, but a kind of just like you participating in a large-scale battle. This battle is not an act of aggression. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> what battles usually are, right? We will attack their spirit and make them submit. Oh, uh, the voice acting's pretty bad. But, like, there's an army I'm supposed to be fighting here. Now, I haven't run into anything to kill yet, but... It's a shame that this game series never really evolved past what you're looking at here. I mean, newer consoles... I mean, this was exactly what the, uh, the PlayStation 2 needed to really, like, show the difference between the PlayStation 1 and 2, because you never could have had anything like this in the PS1. Just a number of enemies that are appearing on screen at once would have been just a ridiculous dream you would have had. Okay, yeah, I do remember this, the uh, Dynasty Warrior demos, anyway, being easy. I didn't actually buy that many Dynasty Warrior games. There was... I think I got one of them for the PS2, then I got one of them for the PS3, and I think maybe all the ones in the PS4 I probably just gave them. Uh, I must have played that Hyrule Warriors, the Legend of Zelda one. But, I mean, it was it was garbage, I think. Just another Dynasty Warriors game. Nothing really special about it. Just because you stick uh, Zelda characters on it doesn't mean that it's good all of a sudden. <laughs> Just slaughtering my way through these chumps. Oh, killed 50 people. 
Oh, armor. All right, got defense plus two for 30 seconds, so there's this dude in the elephant I'm going to take out. Oh, okay. <laughs> got a cutscene. What? What are these monsters? It's an elephant, buddy. Calm down. <laughs> oh! Another arm. Hmm. My bodyguard died. Okay, I gotta take that. I gotta dismount this fella. Come here. Come here. You are Damn it. Too far. Be careful. I'm not I'm not gonna be careful. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> I gotta dismount you. Okay. Oh. You're a better general than I have heard. I'm a better general than you have heard. Of course, generals don't always pick up a spear and then run to the front lines, do they? Whoa, where'd you come from? Of course, I'm definitely playing this game wrong. You're not supposed to go ahead and just take on the entire entire uh, enemy army all by yourself. You're supposed to work as a team with your group and then all of that. And I'm not I'm not. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm running out of time. I better. Be careful. I better move forward. <laughs> Oh, there's a general here. I like how the the enemies like are ten feet away, but they're popping into existence because they're <laughs> just so many uh, so many enemies on the screen at once. The game just can't handle it. <laughs> Whoa! What happened? I didn't realize there was a time on that first. Use all the force you have. Alright, I took out the gate captain. What's he got here? Oh, I thought he dropped something. Whoa, that guy's pretty good. Maybe he should be the general. Okay, these things are health. I guess they're like rice balls or something. Moving on. Oh! Do I not know how to take this guy off? Eh, screw him. Moving on. I have more random soldiers to slaughter. I mean, you can look at it now and say that the uh, environments are really simple. Don't have much uh, variety to them and all that, but at the time, this was like a huge thing. Hmm. You are here. You are early. Jeez, <sighs> yes, I am early. Okay. Whoa, dude, calm the hell down. Tch, like the noises they're making when you smack them out of the air.
<laughs> yeah, you smacked me into the health on you, dumbass. Oh, okay. Everyone here is dead. Anything in this? No, I guess not. <laughs> oh, there's another dude. See if I can actually do it this time. I am Zurong, daughter of fire. Oh, it's a woman this time. How do I get these people off? I could have sworn you jump up there and you smack them off their elephant. Oh, they're all running. Ah, yeah. Come on now. Get back here. Where are you going? <laughs> Where are you going? Alright, I'm about to die. You are too far. Be careful. Health item. Okay, I got a minute and a half. <laughs> Come on. Is she hitting her own... Group, groups. Yeah, I'm not. Unless she's like the target. Oh, jeez, I didn't realize you were this hammy and terrible. What's this? Oh, full recovery. Alright. Ah, you bitch. <laughs> Get back here. Oh, there's somebody on foot. be dead by now. Oh. Gotta pay attention. An enemy officer has fallen to my blade. And I ran out of time. Lost a fight. How did I lose? I slaughtered my way through a lot of people. A lot of them. Alright. Let's, let's uh... SSX Tricky. Alright, so this was definitely not an early demo disc. The SSX series, I don't think, even started until the PS2. And Tricky was the sequel. EA Now, this was a big change from... If I remember this series correctly. Most people were used to cold borders on the PlayStation. And you had... Um, Jeez, he looks like he works at a Burger King in 1972. You had the Cool Borders series on the PlayStation, and then you had the 1080 series, I think it was the 1080 series, on the N64. And they were both sort of simulation-y, trying to be realistic. And SSX comes out, and SSX is like Cool Borders if it was on, hooked on meth. The jumps look insane. Look at this. Yeah, 
Let's do this. Oh, stupid. <laughs> I mean, look at these jumps. It's insane. <laughs> Not even trying to be realistic, but, you know, the SSX series went on for quite a while. I mean, you had PlayStation games, and I think SSX jumped platforms and became an Xbox thing for a long time. I'm not sure where it is now. I don't know if SSX games are still around or not. If new ones, or when last time an SSX game was uh, made. I don't know how to do trips. <laughs> My first? I do not deserve to be first. So stupid. <laughs> you gotta drink the boost. Oh, I have a reverse cam, huh? Get out of my way, red. Oh, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Where am I? Oh, I'm still there. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Some glitch. I mean, the demos that... Uh, I mean, they make a point of... how oh, I won somehow. They make a point of... saying in the intro to the disc that these games have not completed the testing cycle, so it might yeah! be bugs. And... these games, day. these demos, tend to be produced uh, pre-game release, so... Alright, so... Also, I'm running it on an emulator, so there's probably also bugs there. Final Fantasy X, huh? Oh, it's the freaking uh, demo. Oh, definitely. I remember this demo. Ah, yes! Two-part demo. There's the Xanarkin section. There's the Xanarkin section, and there's one that takes place in Besaid. Which takes place in like an hour or so further into the game. You know, this was... I had... The demo for... I don't know if there was a demo for Final Fantasy IX. I don't remember the one. I definitely didn't play it if there was. But the demos for Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy VII were probably the most ideal sections of the game to create a demo for. Because it had... Like, it threw you right into the action and let you see what the game had to offer. Now this sort of does the same thing, only being having a two-part demo, it lets you taste a couple of different sections of the game. Now there's this, with what at the time was an absolutely beautiful uh, intro cinematic. I mean, Square was always known for their, their gorgeous cinematics. And on the PlayStation 2, this was definitely like a step above what they were capable of before. If nothing more, the uh, compression and video of the PlayStation 2 is better than we could pull off in the PS1. But I mean, look at the animation here, it's just great. You're not really given any sort of context of what's going on here. And I remember I sort of have always, since eight anyway, taken up a sort of a personal policy when it comes to Final Fantasy games as to not put any effort into spoiling the game for myself. Square is usually pretty good at keeping 
plot details and all that kind of stuff locked down. So you're not really going to spoil it to yourself by reading all pre-release stuff and all that kind of thing. But in general, I kind of avoid as much of this as I can, so I'm going into these games kind of blind. So, watching this for the first time when this demo was released, I didn't know what the hell I was looking at here. <laughs> this weird game where you're in a big sphere of, of water and you're throwing a ball and then nobody's drowning somehow. And then this monster attacks and then suddenly here we are. No context. But it throws you into like it gets it's an exciting cinematic and then it puts you into this you don't know who this dude in red is. Orin! What are you doing here? I was waiting. What are you talking about? Then it puts you into a bunch of fights. Perfect place to start a demo off. Now the besage section is substantially slower. But it introduces you to a few more characters and you get a kind of a better feel for the bulk of the game. It begins. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea what the hell I was looking at here. Don't cry. Of course, I mean, even playing the game proper, it doesn't start much earlier than what you see in the demo. So you're not really given a context as to what the hell that was. I mean, having played the actual game, I know what that was now. <laughs> Calm down, please. This was really a showcase for the PlayStation 2. How, uh... I mean, look at the detail on, especially, like, Orin there. Of course, I mean, that's the high-detail character model. She didn't see through the bulk of the game. But it was there when it was needed. Now we're looking at a pre-rendered cinematic. We called it Sin. Sin? Yes, Sin. Sin spawn there. <laughs> Way to look like a puss there, Titus. Where were you keeping that? Now this drive drives me freaking insane. He uses the dull age of the sword, dull side of the sword. I hope you know how to use it. So I mean you can look you can look at the damn thing. And he's And you can see that like the lighter edge is supposed to be the sharp edge. And he hits it with the dull edge. I mean it's sharp up to a point along the dull side. But, like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, what's wrong with you, Beatles? Can't you tell? You cut with the dull edge of a knife. Don't bother going after all of them. Cut the ones that matter and. Yeah, yeah, cut the ones that matter. Of course, you could use some strategy when fighting these things and take out the ones that have the shiny spines, but being so early in the game, and honestly just being a demo, you don't really have to worry about all that stuff. So, moving on. Hmm. The quality an animations is much better than what we had seen in the previous games. Although, it doesn't 
match up to a modern standards. Like, there's no blending between the animations of, uh, there's no blending between the animations of, like, running and walking. And when they run up hills, it doesn't really, like, uh, overdrive. There we go. I'm supposed to input something here. There we go. The animation doesn't blend. And when you're running up hills and stuff, it doesn't look like you're running up hills. It just looks like you're running on a flat plane just going up. But of course, the PlayStation 2 didn't have all the memory in the world, so... You couldn't, uh... store that much animation... Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> this thing just hits you with Demi a lot. You know, it's more than an hour, really. The second part of the demo takes place more than an hour into the game. Because you have to get through this entire... Well, you go through the beginning, like, right before the demo begins. And you go through the section of the demo. Then Titus has to wake up at the... What is it? The Tomb of the Unknown Faith, I think it was called. And then... You end up outside the Sade. Then you go and do the trial. So it, it's, it's a little bit longer than that. And... And then the second part of the demo takes place when you're leaving the Sade. No, oh, can't pause. Alright, I can see it now. These PS2 demo discs are gonna take a while. Not only are there a lot of demos, a lot of extra stuff to do, but, I mean, this demo is long as hell. And I'm only playing the one half of it so far. Yeah, I'm jumping all through their conversation. Alright, so I gotta hit that truck. Or not, whatever. Hmm. Which one's flickering? Yeah, these things are about as easy to kill as they are in the final game. I mean, this is just the intro. You're not expected to actually lose here. Huh. This could be bad. That. Knock it down. What? Trust me, you'll see. It's a stupid plan. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, what it, what it exactly are you hoping to accomplish by destroying that thing? I mean, it does work out for him, but there's no reason why uh, Orin would have known that that would happen. Hm. When they start to flicker, I mean, it will... It'll eventually go and a more powerful attack. So you want to kill the ones that are flickering. See, that one's not gonna... before the next attack, that one isn't gonna go. You can tell by the right side. So now I gotta kill it, because it's got its turn is up next. Now there's gonna be one attack, and then it'll be Titus's turn. 
And since nothing's flickering, I might as well just attack the truck. A lot of conversation going into this uh, early game demo battle that doesn't really matter. Alright, so I think I probably shouldn't even bother. I could probably take this thing out. Oh, nope. Spines hit. Oh, I thought for sure I was at the end. This has got to be it, though. There we go. Wow, what was in that truck? <laughs> was that his plan? <laughs> Really? Was this really your plan, you crazy bastard? Hmm. That's a hell of a jump there, Titus. That's the end of that demo. Well, the end of... Oh, jeez, I gotta hit... I gotta... Restart. Alright, let's do the other one. Now, this is... Jumps a good ways into the game. Gives you a better idea of what the game is actually going to play out to be. And you're not really given any context. You're just sort of here running around. Huh. <laughs> One of the Albed texts. Now this is a little weird. Because by this point in the game, you've already met Kamari. So him running and attacking you like this just doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe he's testing you or something, but... You know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it kind of works for the demo, because you got this... You're not given any that previous interactions to have any context for. Kamari was a character I didn't much care for playing as in the game, because he was sort of a uh, like a middle-of-the-road character. He was designed to be placed in a number of, uh, in the middle of the sphere grid so he could go in any a number That's of different enough. ways. He could be a caster, he could be a physical attacker, whatever. But if you don't really commit to anything, he just sort of sucks. Uh, what's with that guy? Kimari Ronso. Of the Ronso tribe. He's learned the fiend's way of fighting. That's not what I meant. He's another Yuna's guardian. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand him either. Kamari doesn't talk much anyway. Mm. But he has protected me since I was a child. Huh. Oh, I'm gonna gain some AP. <laughs> All right, so yeah, not much context provided. You like you don't know who all of these characters are, 
but you don't really need to. I mean, you're just sort of thrust into a fairly tame section of the game, much further along the lines. But what it does do is it does show you how good-looking this game is. Oh, okay, glitched. <laughs> And it does give you a little bit of a sampling of, like, the different ways. That's your department, right? <laughs> true, true. But, uh, why don't we let our summoner show us what she's... Okay, so it's given you the chance to switch out your characters and summon and all that kind of stuff. First real battle. Show us what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. Summoning has always been a uh, big part of Final Fantasy games, and in 8, it was kind of like integrated into the story to some extent, but really, 9, it was even more so, with Dagger and all that, but really it's 10 that summoning is like a, like such an integrated part of the story itself, that and Yuna is really just kind of like a white mage in terms of what her class is. Weak physical attacks. She can't really uh, do magic attacks, but she's also got this summoning ability, which is uh, a big part of the story. I mean, if you ever want to play the game, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But the fact that she's a summoner is, like, crucial to the story of the game. Let's see... Having the ability to summon these things does give her quite a bit of uh, damage potential. Although, honestly, I wouldn't, had I not been forced to, have bothered summoning a uh, bothered summoning anything to fight this thing. <laughs> honestly, summoning it's useful, but not. Um, Sometimes it's kind of a bad idea, or it makes fights take longer than it should. <laughs> it's got a weapon there and everything, but I can't access the menu to equip it. Now, the camera angles aren't fixed in the same way that they are in, say, like, 7, 8, or 9, in the sense that we have a... Another one of those. <laughs> no problem. See, good. See, this is what I would have done. Now it's basically just, uh... It's basically just weakened to... It can't attack you very well because it can't see and it's going to miss most of its attacks. And you just chip away on its health. I'm going to swap you now for Tidus. Whoop, she ran in a weird direction. Then you just beat the piss out of it. Can't switch out to Kamari. So yeah, the game, Final Fantasy games that came out for the PlayStation 1 had a... Uh, since you couldn't push that much... Uh, 3D geometry in a PlayStation 1. They opted for a kind of static 2D backgrounds, which were like raster images of high detail, beautiful environments. And then had the characters, which were fully 3D models. When you get into the battles, you went into 3D environments also. But it was limited to a small area. So you get to the PlayStation 2, and well, PlayStation 2 is quite a bit more power powerful. So, not only do we have 3D characters, but we have 3D environments. But for the most part, this game limits your kind of camera angles. Now, I'm gonna, someday, I'm gonna jump into this game with a, with like a, a memory scanner to see if I can adjust the camera angle and turn it around and see what like I'm not supposed to be seeing here. And see what like the environment around Titus here looks like from a different angle. Because you're definitely only supposed to be seeing things from certain perspective. Oh, look at this. A very uh, well-placed 
group of enemies. Each one is designed to be attacked by a specific character, like this one here, Titus is supposed to kill. Waka, the flying enemy, because it's dodge is easy but doesn't have a lot of health. And then this thing with Lulu's magic, because it doesn't take physical damage that way. Doesn't take much physical damage. Oh, it healed itself. See, like Titus attack it, barely any damage. Yeah. I'll handle it. Yeah, I thought I. Thunder, maybe? There we go, that was it. Just didn't have the right, uh, didn't have the right spell to use. But look at this, I mean, you, it's a 3D environment, but the camera is locked. I don't have any control over it. And it's following Titus, and it pans around the environment and looks real good. But it's still locked into a certain angle. And this is as opposed to what they did in 12, which, Final Fantasy 12, I mean which had a 3D environment, but you had camera control. And I'd say it looked probably just as good, but I don't know, maybe the characters didn't quite look quite as nice. But it, uh, can I save? Nope. <laughs> ah, look, I have a little bit of control here. I mean, I'm not controlling the camera, but it follows Titus around. But there's less to look at in this environment. There's not, uh, it's not cluttered up with foliage or anything. So yeah, we're leaving Besaid here. And you never return as far as the, uh, the story of the game goes, I think. If I'm remembering correctly, you never come back here. Look at that, they got a, like, uh, I'm guessing that's an alpha texture that's just sort of shimmering across the side of the dock here. Make it look like waves. dramatic kid, but I guess not really, considering they know what's going to happen to her. <laughs> the boat hasn't left dock yet. <laughs> Alright, so it wants me to restart again. I'm just going to jump back to the save state before I got in. Crash Bandicoot crash came in this also. Jeez, they really loaded this disc down, didn't they? These episodes are gonna be long. Crash Bandicoot didn't really... I mean, it's... Day in the Sun was definitely in the PlayStation 1 era. And as a PlayStation game. Now, in this generation, because Universal owned uh, the Crash license, as opposed to Naughty Dog who created it, Konami had their hands in this? Jeez. Crash Bandicoot ended up going to a number of different consoles. And, like, you identify Crash as a PlayStation thing, but it's not really anymore. Also, once Naughty Dog wasn't developing them anymore, Naughty Dog moved on to bigger and better things. Especially by now. The, uh... Crash never really lived up to the hype that or lived up to what he was on the PlayStation 1. Oh my god, there's a error. Look at that. It's supposed to be like a um, like a fog, but it, it's glitched out. <laughs> of course it's not the game's fault. I'm running this in an emulator. And I've said a million times oops, <laughs> he died. <laughs> 
as I've said a million times in earlier episodes of this, usually you would configure an emulator to play a specific game, as opposed to uh, what I'm doing here, which demo discs, which have a whole bunch of different games. Also, the uh, demos tend to not be uh, like complete versions of the game. So it's like, okay, it's an incomplete game that you're seeing a demo of running it on an emulator that's definitely uh, not optimized for every specific game. It definitely feels like a Crash Bandicoot game, right down to the camera not having much sway when you move to one side or the other. It does control a little bit. One of the problems that I had with the original Crash games, and it was really an unavoidable thing if you're going to do what they wanted to do on the PlayStation 1, was the camera was definitely locked on... Cr Oops. <laughs> was locked looking at Crash's ass. And you couldn't... Um, and you couldn't move the camera side to side, which made platforming difficult, because you didn't really have the best angle to view things from. Now, the reason for that was because the PlayStation, like, said a million times over in a million different ways, was a limited piece of hardware, didn't have the best as far as um, being able to do things in 3D and space. And one of the big problems that they had was there was no, um, no, no hardware support for any way of sorting polygons as far as seeing what should be visible in front of something else. Now, this could be done in the PlayStation 1, but it would require um, a measure of the system's performance overhead in order to pull off. And in Crash Bandicoot, well, Naughty Dog's like, well, I mean, we could do that, but I'd rather use that for say, polygon pushing power. So that's what they did. But in order to pull that off, to keep it from, you know, looking like crap, they went and um, sort of preloaded, pre-computed and preloaded onto the disk all the polygon sorting uh, information. So it can just sort of load it off a disk, what should be visible in front of everything else. Meaning that the not only did it have to constantly sit there and be churning off the disk, because there wasn't enough memory on the PlayStation to uh, do that, load up an entire level. It also meant that, well, everything always had to sort of be always viewable from the same angle, because that's what stored on the disc. Oops, didn't get my, uh, didn't get my mask. So it's a little interesting to look at this PlayStation 2 game, which is definitely not subject to the same technical limitations as the PlayStation 1. Sticking so close to that same formula is completely unnecessary. But maybe they just felt like it's so ingrained as to being what Crash is that they're... What am I doing? This is pointless. So ingrained as to being a part of Crash Bandicoot that they just continued that trend here. It does feel like the camera sways back and forth a little bit, but... I mean, by that point... Oh, Time Splitters too. By that, by this point in history, this 2000 or something, the gameplay of the Crash Bandicoot series was definitely something that should have been left in the rearview mirror. Okay, Time Splitters 2. I had played uh, Time Splitters 1 as uh, an episode of Until I Die a little while ago. And the game was better than I had expected it to be. I, I mean, it's definitely not like... Call of Duty or Halo levels of quality or whatever. It's definitely like an improvement over like uh, like the Golden Eye, Perfect Dark kind of games. But it wasn't like Halo, Call of Duty, and what else was in that era? I guess you could say Killzone, though Killzone still feels a bit primitive to me. Maybe Black? I don't know. But, I mean, oh, let me get used to this. Oh my god, no. This is... Okay. It's got a relatively modern style, uh... 
control scheme. That's not quite right though, because this... Okay, yeah, can I change this? This is, this, is, this is not working for me. I didn't I didn't change it. <laughs> Still not right. This is weird because I mean Time Splitters 1 felt relatively modern as far as its control scheme. This Am I changing it even? Custom default, default, uh... This is... <laughs> okay, so the left stick... Let me custom it, okay. The right stick should look, should also look, turn, okay. The left stick should run and sidestep, alright, so I think that, that's, there we go. That feels a little bit better, which is weird that that's, considering that the first time splitters sort of defaulted to that, why did time splitters 2 not? Up, oh. jump. Time Splitters was made by Free Radical, which was made up a de development studio that was made up of former Rareware devs who were at the time a Nintendo studio, a Nintendo first or second party. I think Microsoft owns them now, but they were at the time best known for Perfect Dark and Goldeneye, which were. Probably the two best first-person shooters of the 32-slash-64-bit era. There's no power. Hmm. Who the hell I mean, you can even see, like, the, uh, the health bar, the semi-hemispherical, uh, circular health bar, that very golden eye-ish. <laughs> But they broke off of they broke off of um, Rare and away from Nintendo, I guess. And I guess they signed on. They wanted to make PlayStation games, and they took their first-person shooter expertise and made the Time Splitter series. And boy, it was a big deal at the time. It seems strange now because there hasn't been a Time Splitter game in quite a number of years. But it was a big deal for a number of years. Time Splitters was the first-person shooter genre in the early, uh, whatever generation you want to call this. Of course, it, it hasn't aged that well. But it's, oh, there we go, I did something. <laughs> Auto aim. There I go. Do I have it? I think I need to close another valve to get through. Thanks for showing me. <laughs> Remember this demo. I mean, I must have played it. 
I think I'd remember this demo disc a lot, considering it had the Final Fantasy demo. But, you know, maybe... Maybe this wasn't the first disc that had the Final Fantasy demo. And I played it a lot on the first disc, and then the second one had this... Jump. Am I gonna run into some health or what? Yeah, it's it's more modern style controls now that I switched it. Still doesn't feel quite right. It's a little loose. Of course, I don't expect it to work as good as like Call of Duty or Battlefield would nowadays. It's serviceable. Bad news, that's bad news right there. I like kill this thing. Ah. Alright. That's enough of those. This video is already going to be long enough. I should really consider splitting this into multiple... Multiple parts, you know? Oh wow, that was a lot of controls. I should have read some of that. Eidos, huh? Some helicopter... Attack helicopter game. I was really excited at the time for the possibility of flight simulators in the PlayStation 1. Because the PlayStation 2 had them, and some of them were actually like pretty good too. But it was... Some of them... Oh. I'm killing my own guys. Because, I mean, some of the flight simulators on the PlayStation 1 were actually pretty good, in my opinion. But it was, of course, limited by performance and all that kind of stuff. But, oh, I forgot how to fire. There we go. Since you didn't have, um, like, as much... Like, of course, you're going to see the ground in any flight sim, but it's going to be far away. Flight simulators tended to work out fairly well on PlayStation 1, as well as, like, the space combat sim games like that. Like, um, what was that, uh, what was that popular one? Colony Wars? PlayStation 2, I figured, like, oh, it would just be so much better. But then the, the console came out, and I just never really got any of them. Like, I don't even remember this one. Arriving in 2001. 16 by 16 kilometer maps. 256 kilometers squared. I guess that was a big deal back then. I mean, for a flight sim, it's not that big of an area, but I guess at the time. Half-Life, really? Oh. Half-Life? 
this, uh, the PlayStation 2 version of Half-Life was actually the first version of Half-Life I played. And it was actually a good version of it, too. It wasn't just some, uh, half-assed, uh, port. Not only did it, I mean, it controlled reasonably well for a Hello. console first-person shooter, but it actually looked better than the PC version. I'm hoping it doesn't drag me through any of its stupid bullshit. Yeah, let me just do my thing. Yeah, this was actually a... I mean, even as far as a PlayStation 2 first-person shooter, there were better-looking ones than this. Half-Life, the original Half-Life, was never really that good-looking of a game. It wasn't ugly by any means. And this is a better-looking version than what we have seen on the PC, I, I believe, even. Can I go? <laughs> oh. But it's, uh, looks good enough, right? And I'm just taking note that even though the, uh, the axes are inverted compared to time splitters, it is up a loading screen. <laughs> it does feel relatively modern as far as its gameplay, as far as its control scheme. Yes, but with good reason. This is a rare opportunity for us. I don't want to listen to you guys. We've seen yet. And potentially the most unstable. Now, now, if you follow standard insertion procedures... Dude, shut up. Fine. I don't know how I can say that. Although I will admit that the possibility of a resonance cascade scenario is extremely... Gordon doesn't need to hear... Okay, so this is not a very good demo. You should have just thrown me in with the, uh, the head crabs and stuff. Instead of making me sit through all this kind of stuff, it's fine for the beginning of an actual game. It's not that great for a demo. Where is it at? It's been a long time since I played Half-Life. Little cart I gotta push into there. Few moments too many. Oops. so I can get going. I'm trying, motherfucker. <laughs> I'd be done by now if you gave me that chance. Ah. There, 
They sound like they're alright, right? I didn't screw this up, did I? As much of a game as people like to chalk up the original Half-Life as being like a revolutionary game, I don't feel like it really was. I feel like Half-Life 2 was, but not the first one. First one, I mean, it put a little bit of effort into its environment and storytelling and all that kind of crap, but it's Half-Life 2 that I feel like, oh, hello. Half-Life 2, I feel like, should get more praise than that. Now oh, loading. Yeah, there was a time when Valve gave a crap about console releases. I guess they really haven't since Portal 2. Yeah, let me out. Should I stick this dead guy's face into it? No. Hey. You know, your chest compressions will work a lot better if you take his armor off. Oh, hello. This where I wanna go? Yeah, I guess. Hey, scientist, follow. Follow. Oh, maybe I don't need you. Get to it. Yeah, I'll wait right here. No, don't wait here. Get over here and do this. No. We just want to hit things with a crowbar. Okay. Some damage. <laughs> yeah, those loading screens. Maybe the PC version didn't have that. Hmm. Uh, that seems a little dangerous. <laughs> ah, dead. <laughs> Oh, okay, no, I'm done. <laughs> I wanted to hit things with a crowbar. Didn't get there. <laughs> oh, it's just a video. Uh, did I try? Alright, let load save state. Try this again. Hawk Pro Skater 3 Splashdown. This gameplay? Nope. Alright, you had... There were some, um... Games of this style during the previous generation. PS1 and 64. Wave Race, I think it was called. Wave Race was a Game Boy game, but Wave, Wave Race 64 was the big one that everyone liked. And it, like, surprisingly good order physics for its era. And the closest thing you really had to that was kind of um, Jet Moto. So I thought Jet Moto was actually a more fun game, but it was less technically impressive. But PlayStation 1 didn't have a chance of having those sort of water physics that you saw in Wave Race 64. PlayStation 2 is much more capable of that kind of thing. But, you know, nobody gave a crap by this, this point. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. 
Just a video. All right. It's hard to believe how huge the Tony Hawk series was at the time. I think, like, even though the first one was huge, the second one was huger. <laughs> I think maybe the series lost a little bit of its luster when it moved into this generation, but it still, it went on for quite a number of years. I mean, it was, it was huge. Uh, was this multiplayer? This predates the network adapter, doesn't it? But yeah, I mean, bigger environments, better, uh, better things to jump off of. I remember there was a Dreamcast version of the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and they, I remember they showed off screenshots of it before release, and it looked absolutely incredible when the actual game comes out, and the game, and the Dreamcast version didn't. <laughs> they lied to us. Let's try Batman again. Ah, oh, okay, it's gonna work this time. Batman Vengeance is rated teen. Takes a dive and then we string him up and drop him in the tree. <laughs> All right. Any question? The Batman series, it was the gener number of years after this, like six or so, five or six years after this, that the Arkham series ended up finally In a city coming out. The brink of chaos. And that was when Batman the games actually stopped falls. sucking. I was never a huge fan of the Arkham games, but I do recognize that they were good. This, I don't even know what this is. This looks like garbage. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, it, I mean, I guarantee you it's a bad game, but it does, maybe, maybe this wasn't bad, I don't know. As you've never seen it before. Hope is death. Hope is death? Alright. Alright, it's the last in the vault. There's so many other things in this demo disc, the underground disc download station, huh? And these are save games, uh, Capcom vs. SNK, Smugglers Run 2. Smugglers Run, oh man, I gotta do that game. That, that, was, a, that was a great game. Probably sucks nowadays. NBA Street. Okay, it's only three. Behind the scenes, Hot Shots Golf 3. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to watch all of these. Uh, never a Hot Shots fan. I mean, I get like people like their golf sims, and Hot Shots is a goofy one. People like Hot Shots. Japan is the never really a fan. Video game world, and many of our favorite games originate there. We wondered how a game makes the transition from Japan to North America. So we talked to Santa Monica Studios producer Taku Imasaki about the process of bringing Japan's most popular golf game to the U.S. Hot Shots, Hot Shots was real popular. made with the Japanese market in mind. It's a, it's a huge game in Japan. Therefore, it has the art style... Santa Monica Studios, what are they better, well, I mean, recently known for? So we realized that we had to do a lot to it. I mean, I guess they did Hot Shots, but Santa Monica, they're, they're more recently they're known for some other big PlayStation releases now. The game has an art style that borrows heavily from Japanese animation called anime. Up till now, there have been lots of golfing games with realistic characters, and there are still such games. But that felt too much like a golfing simulator instead of a game. That may be fine for people who actually play golf. All right, yeah, I, I had to look it up. <laughs> God of War. So for a game style that would be fun no matter who was playing it. We They've done God of War. Not realistic. During uh, Hot Shots Golf 2, uh, we did, looking at the uh, list, I see Connecticut, which really uh, I guess that was a bit of a big style. deal, though not as big a deal as God of War. But then God of War in 05, 07, God of War 2, 2010, so God of War 3, God of War Ascension in 13, 18 was just God of War again, and then the upcoming God of War sequel. They also did Flow, the. Uh, the Warhawk game for the PS3 
calling on... I mean, these are... They work in tandem with another developer for these. Calling on cars, God of War, Chains of Olympus. That was the PSP game. Flower. Flower was alright. Fat Princess, people like Both that. Japanese another American God of War. Twisted Metal on the PS3. Well, they did the twi part of one. Twisted Metal, huh? Like Skate Plan, I don't know what that like is. Uh, also, Sorcery, wasn't that the move game? Starhawk, oh. Be was that good? Scenery. I remember owning it. Uh, I can't remember if it was good or not. Probably not. Sunset. Journey! Really Journey, nice that was a big deal. Sound experience. Shapes, Unfinished Swan. That was the, the, where everything you had to throw paint around, I think. All Stars Battle Royal. Uh, everyone's gone like to the Rapture, Order 1886. A Japanese game to the US. What Remains of Edith Finch. So they, they were involved in a lot of other... Sorry, I'm talking over this guy. <laughs> they are involved in a lot of other games, but really, they're known for God of War. Behind the scenes, Final Fantasy X. Simply put, the Final Fantasy series has been the most successful and innovative in video game history. The games have captured fans by always staying on the cutting edge of technology and storytelling. Final Fantasy X is no exception. As usual, the game has a completely new storyline and a new combat system. Yeah. That was something some Recently, of my friends we had a hard time grasping at the time. To find out how they're keeping the series fresh. Waiting for a Final Fantasy VIII that they didn't get that the game was going to have a completely different cast of characters and not actually be a sequel. Final takes place in a big city called Zinarkin. Zinarkin, huh? sport called Blitzball there. The main character is Zanarkin. a popular player in the sport and comes to a place called Spila to play. Spila? When he tries to return to Spira. his hometown, <laughs> he meets many different people, and that's where the story starts. What the hell is doing the translating in here? In order to shock and surprise the players the way I did in Final Fantasy VII and VIII, we had to keep including new elements in the game that nobody thought of before. In Final Fantasy X, we could add the voiceovers for the characters and show the facial expressions very well. Yeah, that was because a big deal. That, I kept the overall story very simple. All right. Stop with the frequency. Have you ever dreamed of being a rock star performing killer songs to the roar of the crowd? Well, no. Harmonix, a Boston-based developer, has now made it possible. Harmonix. Even if you can't play a note on a guitar. Harmonix. Get ready oh. to hone your skills on the world's newest musical instrument, the PlayStation 2. Yeah, Frequency Harmonix is a revolutionary they hit it big with music Guitar Hero that will and then gamers into musicians and probably a rock lot of band. musicians into they gamers. Did, they More broke off else, and did rock band Frequency later. Frequency is a game about making music. And now I music. think maybe we they really went out of business. Who knows? Kind of <laughs> I don't think rock band's a big deal anymore. Need to master in order to it was huge the for a while, though. It was huge. Really Harmonix, I, I guess that was alright. Guitar uh, Hero and Rock Band. You know, Rock Band started. You get much more uh, I mean, this definitely looks like Rock Band. Into, like, the fabric or of the Guitar music, Hero. Because you're listening to each track Guitar Hero actually started with PS2. The other thing that's People probably don't is a really think of, of it as a PS2 remix, game, but it was mode, definitely a PS2 game. All the components of the song and put them together pretty much however you or at like. least started the there. Remixes of the songs that we, uh, that we have in the game. It's definitely got that formula, but I mean, without the like you've ever seen. guitar by controller, using the easy to learn controls, it's you'll be making music not the in same. No time. Uh, the gameplay in yeah, yeah, it's enough for you. We had a demo of this. Uh, I don't need to see a person actually snowboarding. Because SSX isn't supposed to be real. <laughs> oh, alright, that's not too bad. <laughs> Moves. Portal Runner. How's Portal Runner? Uh, I guess it's not going to load. Really finicky this thing is. Alright. Uh, loading a save state. Let's try that one more time. All right, it loaded. Hi, my name is Jesse with the 3DO company, and today I'm going to 3DO. Be oh my God, is that still a thing? Two. 
in Portal Runner, it's very important for the player to obtain. I'm wondering, 100%. is 3DO Company still and around? I know they, every single the 3DO level. console, the this real player, didn't make it. Easter eggs later on as you finish the game. Let me show you how. In many All right, levels, I don't know what this game is. Where gems are. You can find gems just sitting out on the. Is ground, she like? Just like this. Thumbelina. However, if you collect all of them, you'll notice that it doesn't add up to 100. percent However, there are certain things. Ah, that's enough of that. <laughs> Eco. Tricky portal runner. Okay, let's see Eco. Hello, my name is Nathan from the Tip Team and Consumer Service. Today, I will show you a cool move for the game <sighs> Eco for your PlayStation 2. Get to it, buddy. All we have here is getting across the large chasm by the giant windmill. I'm going to show you how it's done. Take a look. He puts such ahead of us. And the <laughs> he puts such emotion into the, the way he side. speaks. <laughs> to get to that lever, we need to travel to the top of the wind. All right. Uh, yeah, I gotta put some effort into cutting this short. Oh, is that Wayne Brady? Well, rumors are true. Um, this whole acting thing and getting your own TV show, this is merely to supply me with the money for my video game, Jones. The hell's the Wayne Brady show? I don't remember that at all. I'm not like, oh, 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 I like this Pac-Man. No. Slam it, shoot it, power up, kill, kill, kill. Twisted Middle Black kicks all kinds of butt. Dark Angel, dope. Motor Mayhem, Unreal Tournament. I would love, love to be, you know, like seven foot Some tall. Of those games I'm able to turn invisible with a cloaking device. I've got guns and a shotgun or something on my arm. That'd be dope. NBA Street, that is my game right now. I would so dig being a video game voice. All right, and now the aggro crag. Player one, victory. So if anyone's watching <laughs> and you want me on your video game, hook a brother up. Call me. I just pimp myself out. Stop, Wayne. Shut up, girl. I mean, it's a horrible choice. It's like, tell tell me that I can't eat, but you're giving a million bucks. At that point, you know, just give me a burger and let's call it a day. Come on, Shaq. Show him. Fake out, fake out, alley -oop super combo. I'm a huge geek. I've got nice clothes because of the show, but I'm a huge geek. I crown myself winner of the game. Thank you for playing, buddy. Watch the Wayne Brady show. The hell's that guy? <laughs> oh, okay, was that it? All right, here we go. Wow, that was a lot of content on these discs. I'm kind of hoping they don't all have that much stuff in it. 